I think we can all agree on the fact that Meta has released some pretty good updates throughout the years. However, there is also no denying the fact that Meta has messed up a few updates throughout the years. Not everyone gets the same features at the same time. Updates ruin other features that were supposed to be working, or just straight up delete them. And therefore, some users might not want to update at all. But with Meta forcing auto-updates on everyone, that might seem impossible. Or other users might want to get the update sooner, and don't feel like waiting for Meta to release it. So what is up everyone? I'm Mystical. And today, I'll be showing you how to do both those things. 1. Install an update earlier than it is supposed to come out to you. And 2. Disable auto-updates in case you don't feel like updating. So, let's jump right into it. First things first, sideloading updates. This is absolutely nothing new. And it was actually really, really popular back when Meta released hand tracking, 120Hz, and things like that onto the Quest 2. It was a very, very big thing back then. So, what will you actually need in order to sideload an update? Well, first of all, you're going to need a computer. Secondly, you're going to need platform tools, which you can download from Google's own website. Once you have downloaded platform tools, open it up using an archiver like WinRAR or something like that, and extract it into C ADB. This is a folder you're going to need to create directly on your C drive, and the reason I'm saying put it here is because it's really simple to find it. Once you have extracted all your files into your C drive and then the ADB folder, you can open up the command prompt. To do this, press the Windows key and the letter R, type CMD, press enter, and the command prompt should appear. Then you can type CD space C colon slash ADB press enter, and this should now show you that you are inside the ADB directory. Type ADB, press enter, and a long line of code should appear. If this happens, you know that you have installed ADB successfully. Now, what you will require is the update zip for your quest. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not actually allowed to provide these under the video, so unfortunately, this is something you will have to go look for yourself. But they are scattered all around the internet. Reddit seems to be the place to go for things like this. It's actually where I found my V50 PTC update before I was even in the PTC. Unfortunately, that file is now gone. And if I find an archive of like all the updates or somewhere where you guys can download them, I'll put it down in a pinned comment down below just need to make sure that they're safe. Then, once you've got your zip file, what you will want to do is you will want to put your quest into recovery mode. This is super simple. Power off your quest, and then turn it back on by pressing the power button and holding the volume down button. Inside your quest now, you should see the recovery menu. Use the volume buttons to navigate the recovery menu, and then use the power button in order to confirm that you want to sideload update. Your screen will go black for a second, and then it will show the meta logo. After this, it will go black again, but don't worry, you are in ADB sideload mode. Another way of confirming this is by checking if your quest has a purple LED on it. If this is the case, you are in ADB sideload mode. Now what you will want to do is you will want to connect your quest to your computer via a USB cable, and your quest is now connected to your computer using ADB sideload. To confirm that your computer does as a matter of fact see your quest, go back into your command prompt and type ADB space devices. Press enter and your quest should appear here in ADB sideload mode. Once it appears, you know you're ready to perform the sideload. If it doesn't appear here, there must be something wrong with your drivers. And you can also download the Google ADB drivers and install them in case your quest isn't showing up in ADB sideload. So once you've got the drivers installed and your quest is showing up, what you will want to do is type ADB space sideload space and then find the zip file that you downloaded earlier and drag it into the command prompt. If this doesn't work, you might need to copy its path manually and paste it in. After you have this command in, press enter. Keep in mind the name of your zip file is going to be different to mine. Once you've pressed enter, you should see the update begin sideloading onto your quest. Wait a little while, this can sometimes take longer, and once you see the total exfer, you know that the sideload has completed successfully. It will also tell you if it's failed. Your quest should reboot automatically here, but if for whatever reason it doesn't, you can actually just do that by pressing and holding the power button. You should see the meta logo show up, and your quest might take a little while longer in order to turn on. This is fairly standard for Android devices that have just completed a firmware update. And there you guys go. That is how simple it is to force sideload an update onto your quest. Now you can have the latest build as long as you can find it on the internet without having to wait for Meta to give it to you. 
And this is actually how I got into the PTC without even being on the PTC. With that being said though, let's move on on how to block updates. And you may be asking yourself, why on earth would you want to block updates? The security features and the upgrades that come with them are surely better than not updating. Well, as a matter of fact, updates are also known to break things and not just on Quest devices. <laughs> this is known on pretty much every single device ever, especially Windows. <laughs> and in V51, for example, because it was such a major update and an update from Android 10 all the way up to Android 12, the permissions changed. And while this overall is a good thing, it also ruined modding. For example, currently, right now, you can't yet mod Beat Saber using BMBF on V51. An update has been released that should allow this to be possible in the near future, but BMBF just hasn't been updated to do it yet. So a lot of people are waiting for that to be possible before they complete their update. And this is the best part. This isn't permanent. It's permanent between reboots, meaning every time you restart your quest, you don't need to redo this, but it's not permanent permanent, meaning that once it is safe to update, you can just re-enable the app. So let's jump right in. First of all, you will need a Maze File Manager. Now there's tons and tons more benefits to a Maze File Manager than just this. And in case you haven't seen my video on how to get that and all other unofficial APKs onto your quest, you can check out this video right up here. Once you do have a Maze File Manager on your quest, you're going to want to launch it, grant it all the necessary permissions that it might be asking for, and then jump into the hamburger menu in the top left. Scroll down to App Manager and click on it. Once you're inside the app manager, you're going to want to go into the top right here and click on this invisible button. Yes, there's actually a button there. Then click on show system apps. If you don't do this, you will not be able to find the Oculus OS updater. Then scroll down and find the Oculus OS updater. Once you have found it, click on the three dots to the right here and click on properties. This will bring you to the Android settings screen of the Oculus OS updater. Then here you can disable and enable the app. Now, as you can see, you can also re-enable it anytime you feel like it. But by disabling Oculus OS Updater, you will now not receive automatic updates, meaning your quest can stay connected to the internet, which is something a lot of people were very worried about, and full-on disconnected their quest from the internet in order to keep their mods and not receive auto-updates, which is fantastic. I myself need to stay on the latest beta because I need to keep you guys updated, but let's just say a lot of people weren't happy about not being able to use modded Beat Saber on my quest devices. <laughs> With that being said though, that is how simple it is to block updates on the Quest without needing to disconnect from the internet and just overall being able to use your device as is. So there you guys go. Two tutorials for two very opposite things. One, how to get onto the latest update, and one, how to block the latest update. But thankfully now we have a video on how to do both, and that is going to be it. If you guys enjoyed it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community or have any issues, check out the Discord down below and check out the Reddit. I wanna see you posting your spicy memes on there. And if you have any issues, feel free to at me on there as well. Thank you so, so much to all the patrons supporting this channel. Those lovely names are going off to my right right now, and I honestly do not know how to thank you guys enough so thank you and as usual if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead ding my bell and see you again in the next video peace